Simichina, the fourth spirit found in the Lesser Key of Solomon, breaks the reptilian trend that we've seen thus far in the previous two entries of Aguirre's and Basago. However, Simichina, or Gamagin as he's also known, does not break the trend of demons appearing in the form of animals, and like his demonic compatriots, Simichina is also known to appear as a man. As the fourth spirit in the Lesser Key of Solomon, you'd be forgiven for thinking that Simichina had some grand importance, given that we've seen Baal, the king, Aguirre's the duke, and Vasago the prince in the series thus far. But Simichina appears to be little more than a footnote in demonology, given his realm of influence as a horse, and the lack of presence he has in literature. At best, he is a nobleman, or a marquis, one who according to some European countries would rank him above a count, but below a duke. You may be interested to know that Colin de Plancy, in his Dictionnaire Infernal, makes no reference of Simigena, whilst Johann Weyer in the Pseudomonarchia de Monum decides to name him as a Gamgin, owing to his secondary name, Gamagin. Nonetheless, Simigena may not have gotten the love that his predecessors did, but the average occultist and invocator of the time may have found him tremendously useful, given his knowledge of sciences, those that may have been restricted or otherwise frowned upon as being blasphemous. At the very least, if anyone needed a horse, Simigena was probably their go-to guy. We are told in the Ars Goetia that Simigena, or Gamagin, the fourth spirit is Simigena, a great marquis. He appeareth in the form of a little horse or ass, and then into human shape doth he change himself at the request of the master. He speaketh with a hoarse voice. He ruleth over thirty legions of inferiors. He teaches all liberal sciences, and giveth account of dead souls that died in sin. And his seal is this, which is to be worn before the magician when he is invocator, etc. It's difficult to say what sort of influence that a demon like Simigena would have had in hell. Indeed, he was a marquis, so it's possible that he did have some clout in the domain of the underworld, thirty legions of inferiors, no less. But it is this term inferiors which gives us some pause, for it is not established whether inferiors are the same as spirits. Each other demon in the classification is attributed with ruling over legions of spirits, but the term inferiors makes it seem like Simigena's demonic entourage was lesser in some capacity when compared to the likes of his contemporaries. Now considering his rank as Marquis when in comparison to a duke or a prince, and considering his form as a little horse when in comparison to the likes of a crocodile, it's possible that Simigena did not measure up, and thus was deemed only strong enough or worthy enough to govern over inferiors. However, we can also see that Simigena is able to transform himself into a human shape, giving us once more this dual perception of a demon, whereby it is split between rider and mount. This would give us some semblance that Simigena came and went as he pleased, embodying himself into both the role of horse and horseman. Yet we are also told that he does this only at the command of the master, which shows us that he only did this if the summoner asked him to. This may have been so as to serve those who did not know how to ride horses, or to appear to those who had lost their horse and were in need of a new one. It may have also conceivably been used by the injured summoner, who would invoke Simigena to come and pick him up. In essence, you'd be forgiven for thinking of Simigena as the archaic and demonic version of Uber, except instead of a chatty driver, you got a demon on a horse who talked to you about science. Of course, speaking to him about science might have been harder than it seemed, given that he spoke in a hoarse voice. No pun intended. I suppose it should come as no surprise that if a horse could speak, it would probably speak hoarsely, and so conversing with such a demon in an effort to understand science was probably more trouble than it was worth. But teaching sciences wasn't the only service that Simigena offered. As the Lesser Key of Solomon tells us, he could also give an account of the souls who had died in sin. That is to say, he could tell you if your relatives and loved ones were effectively burning in hell. I imagine that realistically, any of the demons could tell you this, for if one's relatives weren't in hell, 
then they'd probably have made it to a better place. But Samijana seems to make a point of this being one of his unique selling points, and with this, he establishes himself as sort of a stock taker of who's in hell and who isn't. I suppose with such an ability, it would be kind of bitter knowing that someone you loved was now suffering in eternal damnation. But I suppose it's also kind of sweet knowing that someone who'd done you wrong was also getting what they deserved. In the Pseudomonarchia Daemonum by Johann Weyer, however, the description of Simogena has some differences. Weyer tells us, Gamogen is a great marquis and is seen in the form of a little horse. When he taketh human shape, he speaketh with a hoarse voice, disputing of all liberal sciences. He bringeth also to pass that the souls which are drowned in the sea, or which dwell in purgatory, which is called katagra, that is, affliction of souls, shall take airy bodies, and evidently appear an answer to integratories at the conjurer's commandment. He tarrieth with the exorcist, until he have accomplished his desire, and hath thirty legions under him. Here we learn that Simogena, under the name Gamogen, doesn't just keep an inventory in hell, but that he raises the souls of those who have drowned and forces them into other bodies, so that they can answer on his behalf. Whether Weyer is referring to men who have drowned at sea, or men who have been drowned in the lake of fire, is not known for sure, but given that he raises these souls to know if a specific person is in hell, it's probably the latter. You may also notice that Samogenus' reach extends into purgatory as well, which Weyer describes as being named Katagra, where he does the same thing in an effort to learn who resides in the space between heaven and hell. Despite being a demon, Gamogen appears to remain with the conjurer until the conjurer's desire has been met, and does not abandon his obligation. Like Masago, this showcases the more positive traits of a demon, one that unlike traditional depictions, aims to help mankind by sharing knowledge. Of course, to traditional religious beliefs, such practices were and are considered taboo and sinful, as well as being something that God would punish. With that being said, one might argue that despite Simogena's pleasantness, there may have been something far more insidious lurking in his offerings. As always guys, if you've enjoyed today's episode on the Lesser Key of Solomon, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. Until next time.